All right, hi guys. Uh, today I would like to talk about the uh, magical diminished seventh chord, um, but I have to preface it with at least a little bit about chord extension, and you'll see why in a minute. Um, let's talk about chord extension. Uh, the smallest unit of a chord is a triad. So technically, like a seventh chord is an extended chord. All right. In other words, um, there are two resting triads, the major and the minor triads. Okay. Uh, they're built in thirds, and if you plop another third on top of one of those chords, you get a version of a seven. Now, there are three types of seven. Uh, there's minor seven, major seven, and dominant seven. When a musician refers to the seventh chord, they're always referring to the dominant seventh, not the major seventh, not the minor seventh. It's very important to make that distinction because the dominant seventh chord is a special chord in a, in a category all its own. All right, so um, now I spoke about something called the scale of seconds and the scale of thirds, and I should have really written this on the whiteboard, but uh, basically the scale of seconds is uh, a melodic based system where you count each note of the scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And when you reach C again, you don't call it eight, you call it one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, um, but there's something, all right, by the way, the scale of seconds and the scale of thirds is my own terminology. This should be employed in academia, but it's not. Uh, the scale of thirds is usually a two octave scale. And um, just ignore, like, uh, this is not my demonstration scale, this is for something else, but it is a, um, it is a scale jumping over the octave. So, you know, you build chords in thirds, root, third, fifth, seventh, ninth, eleventh, so on and so forth, okay? The scale of thirds has to be in two octaves because root, third, fifth, seventh, I just crossed the octave, okay? So you need the wider size scale. Um, now, when you think about that, what they call in the scale of seconds a sixth, uh, in the scale of thirds you would call it a thirteenth. The scale of thirds is called such because you're building, you're jumping in thirds, root, third, fifth, seventh, ninth, eleventh, thirteenth. When you have um, a um, fourth, okay, in the scale of seconds, in the scale of thirds that's the eleventh, and when you have a sixth, uh, that's a um, in the scale of uh, thirds, in the scale of, well, the sixth step of the, of the scale of seconds is the thirteenth in the scale of thirds. Okay, now I just want to give you a quick little system to memorize extensions. If you know how to build a chord up to its seventh, you're doing fine. To get the ninth, the ninth is a whole step up from the root. Now, it isn't technically that, it's an octave in a whole step. Um, and it should be high up there in the chord, not low. There's another reason for that. I'll, when I talk about chord extension proper, I will get into that. But basically the ninth, if you want to find the ninth of a chord, you go a whole step up from the root. Now in the scale of seconds, that's called two. It's the second note of the scale. But in the scale of thirds, you have to leapfrog all the way until you get to the ninth, okay? Um, the eleventh, how to find that one, in a major chord, it's a half step up from the third, but in a minor chord, it's a whole step up from the third. Why? Because the eleventh is equivalent to the fourth in the scale of seconds. So, uh, and, the, and the third changes in a major or minor chord. So, um, the eleventh is either a half step up from the third in a major chord, or a whole step up from the flatted third of a minor chord. The thirteenth in both major and minor chords is a whole step up from the fifth of a chord. So, for example, if I took a C major chord and I dropped the A note on it, this is what they would call a C major 6. Wrong. All right? Because when you're talking about harmony, you should be in the scale of thirds and not in the scale of seconds. So, technically, this should be called, should be called C major add 13. But they call it C major 6 because they're a bunch of idiots. Okay. Now, why am I talking about the extensions of chords? And again, parenthetically, I will state, 
we will get into court extension proper and get into the deeper parts of that. But I, I needed to start with this for the following reason. Now, the diminished seventh chord couldn't exist in the Greek modes. It took the tempered scale for the uh, diminished seventh chord to exist because it has a note that stands outside the natural scale. So here I have an A harmonic minor scale. And uh, if I go to the five chord, as we spoke about with secondary dominance, the, uh, they tweaked the seventh step of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of the A natural minor scale, which comes from the key of C major, but then they took this G and made it a G sharp. What this created was a 5-7 chord at the fifth step from the A minor chord. So we have E, G sharp, B, uh, D, all right? E, G sharp, B, D, and if I were to go to the ninth, I'd, I'd get F, right? But it's called a flat nine, why? Because I said earlier, the ninth can be found a whole step up from, from the root of the chord, all right? But this is a half step. And there's no way around that. It has to be that half step because this is a harmonic minor. So when we get up to the ninth, it's a half step lower than a whole step, of course, right? So we call it the flat nine, okay? Now, E7 flat nine uh, is a great chord. It's uh, definitely uh, very dissonant, but it, it does its job quite well. Anyway, E, G sharp, B, D, F, all right? Now, if I were to take this root and disappear it, I get G sharp, B, D, F. Right there is a diminished seventh chord, and perhaps you can see why this couldn't have existed in the Greek modes, because we need that one little tweak note to create the chord. So we have G sharp, here's a standard diminished seventh form. Here's another one. Here's another. Now this particular shape for demonstration purposes. Now we said uh, E, G sharp, uh, no, we said uh, G sharp, B, D, F, right? So here's G sharp, B, D, and F. Of course this chord isn't built in thirds because to build a chord in thirds on a guitar is not easy. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, G sharp, B, D, F. I'd have to stretch my fingers like this to get, all right? Can't do that on a guitar. Piano, easy. All right, G sharp, B, D, F. Now, I'm gonna show you one of the amazing properties of the diminished seventh chord is if you lower any one of the notes of a diminished seventh chord by a half step, you'll get a dominant seventh chord. So, for example, I'm going to take the F and lower it a half step. I get E7. All right, now I'm going to bring the note back, and this time I'm going to lower the B note by a half step. I get a B flat 7. bring the note back and now I'm going to take the D note and lower it a half step. I get a D flat 7. Bring that note back and now I'm going to lower this G sharp to a G. I get a G7. Okay, so you might surmise from this that maybe there's a close relationship between dominant seventh chords and diminished seventh chords. Indeed there is. Now, is there such a close relationship that maybe you could replace a dominant seventh with a diminished seventh? In some cases, absolutely yes, okay? The demonstration I'm gonna do is Georgia on my mind. So, um, we got a G major seven, B seven, and E minor seven, all right? The case in point is gonna be our B seven. Remember I said all the action in jazz happens on the seventh chord. This is G major 7, not dominant 7. This is B dominant 7 and E minor 7. So three different types of 7. Now what is the diminished chord that this would uh, somehow connect to? Well, if I take this shape here, I could see that I would make the diminished 7th shape by raising that B a half step. Now, can that 
replace in the song, say for example, Georgia, um, the B7 chord. Well, G major 7, B7, E minor 7. Now I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to raise that B to a C note, giving us C diminished 7. Yes, it works. Alright, so diminished sevenths in certain cases, not all, can replace dominant seventh chords. If you were playing a blues, for example, the one seven chord would not sound good as a diminished seven. Now here's a diminished seven. That doesn't work, alright? Where they do sneak in the diminished seventh in the blues is on the four chord. Okay. All right. <clears throat> now here's another wild property of the uh, diminished seventh chord. Uh, if you were to take the entire octave and then split it into exact quarters, you'd get a diminished seventh uh, chord. Uh, and when it jumps, when it reaches to the octave, it just starts over again. So, for example, C, E flat, G flat, A, C, E flat, G flat, A, C, and like that. There's one other chord that splits the octave up symmetrically like that, and that's the augmented chord. It splits it instead of into quarters, it splits it into thirds. All right, now, this is what's called a symmetrical chord. A symmetrical chord really has no root, okay? It's such a tense chord that you can't say which of these notes pulls it down. Is this the root? Is this the root? Is this the root? Or is this the root? So, for that reason, you can name a diminished seventh chord by any one of its four notes and call it uh, F diminished seven, B diminished seven, D diminished seven, G sharp diminished seven. In the case of a line, like say in uh, Ain't Misbehavin', uh, this is going G major seven. Now, we call this G sharp diminished seven, and there's a reason why, because now I'm going to A minor seven and then B flat diminished seven. I'm calling it by those names because we're highlighting this chromatic movement of the scale, all right? So I want, to, I want the, uh, if I were to write this down, I want the musician to know, oh, we're creating a line here, so we're going to call this G sharp diminished seven or A flat diminished seven. Uh, a minor 7, then B flat diminished 7. Not by its other uh, possible names, but the one that follows the line. Okay. Now, here's the weird thing. Since it is symmetrical, if I took a G7 chord, my notes are G, B, D, F, right? If I took it up and moved it up a minor third, I'd get a totally different set of notes. B flat, F, A flat, D, right? Uh, not the same notes as G7, obviously. Now the magic of the diminished seventh chord is if I took a G sharp diminished seven and moved it up a, a whole step and then one other half step, so it's a step and a half called a minor third. All right, I get G sharp B D F. Here I get uh, G sharp B D F. Here I get uh, G sharp B. Uh, D and F, and here I get G sharp, um, D, D, F. The same four notes every time you move this chord up a step and a half. What good does that do you? Well, first of all, it makes it easy to find a diminished seventh in the neighborhood you're playing in. But secondly, you can do little tricks, like say for Georgia on my mind, if I replace B7 with C diminished seven, I get... Okay, so I could use it as a run, a kind of a fancy little, um, like that, okay? So the diminished seventh, ma absolutely magical. It's one of the few chords that contains two tritone intervals within it. Um, if we were to analyze this, F to B, three whole steps, one, two, three, and then uh, D, flat or G sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, contains two tritones. Now what, if you were to look on the circle of fifths, let's say um, 
the key of B and the key of F. You'd notice they were exactly 180 degrees opposite to each other. The same would, would be true if you took the key of D and the key of A flat. You'd notice on the circle of fifths they're ac actually opposite to each other. What does that mean? Conflict. Conflict, what does that mean? Dissonance. All right, so the diminished seventh is an extremely highly dissonant, unstable chord that wants to go somewhere. And in fact, in the old silent movies, um, before they knew more about uh, how to make really good cinematic music, they would create, in horror movies, they'd take the diminished chord and do that sort of thing. Back in the, the silent film days, um, nowadays that's really corny to us, they'd be more likely to take a minor triad and move it uh, a tritone distance away. Like, uh, this is a more modern sound, like A minor to E flat minor. There's such an obtuse movement there that it creates all this tension, okay? So, um, diminished seventh, it's a magical chord. Uh, it's closely related to the dominant seventh, but you have to know how to use it to replace it out. I would say this, if you don't know the rules yet about it, which you probably don't, um, it works best in minor key situations where you place the five, let's say um, uh, E7 to A minor. Now the trick is, you take your E7 chord and take the E and raise it a half step. All the E's in the chord, you raise a half step and boom, you have the diminished seventh. So, so you can hear how it works really wonderfully in a minor situation. Okay. The diminished seventh, one of the two um, uh, symmetrical chords uh, in music. Again, the other being augmented. And it too, uh, basically uh, an augmented chord is you take the fifth and raise it a half step. And uh, that repeats every two whole steps, every major third. In other words, the same three notes every time I cycle up in major thirds. All right, so that is the diminished seventh chord. Works very nicely in minor keys. Why? Because it came from the development of the first minor key, the harmonic minor key. All right. I think that'll be it for today. Um, thanks for viewing. And uh, sooner or later, we'll get into four-note chord theory and chord extension. I don't know, I might take a break from this and jump over to the blues. Also, I'm considering kind of doing a more focused analysis of, of Beatles songs because um, I, did kind of a, I, I, I did kind of a wide brush stroke with Revolver and Rubber Soul, and I'm thinking I'd like to kind of sink in deeper into these songs and give a real uh, taste of the depth of this music and how incredible it is. All right, that'll be it for today, guys. Thanks for checking it out, and I'll see you soon. Bye.